All right, it's time to get into it. It's going to be game number 82 here, and it will be our seventh last Miramar of the oh, tournament. Yeah. I am correct in that. Just did the math right then. Crazy stuff. Math it's time. on desk. There you go. Scary territory that we're stepping into, and scary territory on Miramar for all of these players as we get into it. Let's head over to Pansy and Sims for all the action. Once again, game number 82. Thank you, and it will be from north to south. Bit of a different playing path this time, so could adjust things around, and we'll see how this one plays out. And if maybe NIP can keep their dreams alive. I mentioned that it might not be possible to make it to GLL, but I'll tell you what, it's kind of looking like a potential here. Certainly have a bit of a jump going on when he's looked towards NIP. Not too far off the boys on TSM now, it puts them up into sixth. Excuse me. Yes, six, correct. Mm -hmm. TSM still holding down at fifth. Nice to open it up a little bit more on the desk with Faze. One point behind Liquid in third. And only six points away. Excuse me, 12 points away from G2. And then beyond that, it's about another 40 away from Na'Vi. So even claiming victory here and actually winning the title of Faze 2 champions is not out of the question. That top four, it's all to play for. Yes. Pretty much guaranteed going to the Grand Slam, going to the next PUBG Classic. But if they want the trophy and a bit more cash in the pocket, there's a fair amount of work to do. Navi still holding on strong at the top. Again, this week for them has been their worst week. If mm. you want, if you said they've had a, a bad week, it's the only time they've actually dropped out of, out of the top three. <laughs> They're currently averaging 11th place so far today. Oh, excuse me, they love the last three days. Interesting circle. Does fall to where the playing path is. He goes, he goes, he and speaking goes, of prison, prison. Navi, both of them and Razor Edge have got a bit of work to do to get down to that circle. Yeah, that kind of sucks for them, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> like, if you think about it, Razor Edge sometimes go for the Paraiso. They, they could have really had a nice like, way in. Navi occasionally do go far south as well. But um, yeah, that, this, this could be a rough game for them. But uh, let's look at MIP. Not a bad entry point for them. I wonder how they're going to play this out. Um, they're going to be in the same sort of boat as a lot of the teams just slightly north of this. Um, all comes down to rotations and which way they decide to try and breach into this. I'll be curious. I'll be uh, waiting to see how they uh, do in this because what an idea it is if they get themselves into, um, you know, GLL off the back of these sort of performances. M19, decent position for them. They could just go more towards the center of the map if they want to hang around the crossroads. They could do try and pick up some points. While people rotate, cause it will be a hard rotate for a hell of a lot of these teams, over half of them, for sure. Mexico with the bus. Pick up the players and drop them off wherever they want to be. Face clan. Sometimes you see them actually going all the way down south, taking that bottom ridge line road. I do think with this circle, there will be a lot of teams that are on red alert because in the previous week, we did see it swing down towards Los Higos. So I think now this puts a bit of pressure on that there is a possibility it could go there. Yeah. It's a small possibility, yes, but a possibility nonetheless. So yeah. a few of them might play a little bit more conservative and say, you know what, let's just go down there and prepare for it. If not, you're still going to be somewhere close to the circle. Might have uh, a lot of damage coming from TSM toward G2. That's on the road towards El Azar. So G2 might have to reposition themselves here. They're actually getting out, to be fair. And no, there's going to be more vehicles, but yeah. they still need to get some more gear. Um, you can see the helves are low, and that's probably because they don't actually have the meds. As I say, med, it just appears <laughs> on screen as if they, as if they knew. <laughs> um, but Navi certainly have a lot of work to do. I think the eastern side of this map will be pretty clear for that coastal road, should teams want to do it. Rex actually being quite proactive here. They sent Scoob mm. and Shiv off over to just below Impala, get close to the circle, more important, and they try and potentially capture a few bodies on the way down yeah they really could I, I think for safety's sake this is a really good idea a lot of teams will use that eastern road as the way to approach because you just simply put it's it's hard otherwise you're going to be going through Picardo which is the shooting territory I were not able to land the shots he'd want to and uh, Team Liquid are pulling up on this a little bit as well look at this they're not afraid to pull up on these things Jeems shows them how it's done instantly uh, limited tags on one side and then instantly gets pushed back so that's a fun new way to have a little look and yeah Jeems getting away on the skate there we go, little headshot at the end. Finally, plants one, but Jimbo's still not scared to turn around and answer the call if he has to. Plants on the rotate, where are they going to be coming 
from? Let's take a look at their position. Well, they're very far there. south. This is their southern drop, so they're actually pretty in the best yeah. position out of everyone. Ibby's having an issue this time. A beautiful death got a couple of shots towards him. So these these teams are kind of trading out very early on. It's their territory. It's Dia's territory. I'm very surprised that they've not all gone together and repositioned, just basically pulled a liquid, looted up, and moved on. They've allowed Liquid to get up to this position. If they'd have been faster, they could have got ahead of the game, but Liquid will take the priority areas now. It's their land. You're going to have to deal with them. They're in your backyard. Maybe kick them out, or unfortunately, you're going to have to reposition Ooh, yourself, which Dia road. might have to. Phase on the west now already. They're not far behind M19, but. Nice little approach for them. They could work this one out quite well. Unity, the Knights, Na'Vi all heading that way. I think Windstriker just finishing off their loot as well. It looks like Dio trying to find their, their little bit of territory. Iroh's just not having much luck in this. Going to be pushed away. And you'll have to rejoin the others up in the different compound now. I'm intrigued to see if M19 actually stay put from where they are. They've taken the bend all the way down south, which is a bit of a bottleneck and a choke point that you do find teams rotating across it would be highly unlikely for teams to go down that way it actually would be highly stupid as well just for the simple fact we have a lot of teams that like to linger down there and do loot down this neck of the woods at the end of the day the plane was perfect for them and M19 DA Crow Crowd they're all around this vicinity Wrecker actually going to get a really easy entry point to the circle no one's going to contest whatsoever there's been a fair amount of times that have come in on these eastern shifts and they've had someone like Raise Your Reg who go for a, a different drop point, for instance, if the plane was on the opposing side. We'll be lingering down here, but the fine for now, completely open. Depends how deep they're going to the circle. The deeper they go, the more teams they'll have to fight off and go against. You can see it's already getting quite condensed there. Ends and crook out. Stones throw of each other, M19 also starting to extend their arms reach. Bears have decided to come a little bit closer to home. That's fine. Might scout out that compound just to the left-hand side of Team Liquid, the plateau compound. A bit of a castle on top of a small hill. The Knights have gone slightly earlier than what we see them. With these southern pushes and these southern circles, they're sometimes playing the edge. They're quite late to the party. But they'll arrive at Kumasera uncontested for them, thankfully. Mm. And try and take the back side of it and maybe ward off all unwelcome guests if anyone else wants to try and set themselves there. It'll be a decent, if the circle goes to the north, it'll be in a very good position to be fair. Vitality, NIP, Navi, it's still yet to set up shop. TSM, G2. Oh, Sigsy's so far off as well. Them in hell. It's a wide, yeah. All three of those teams have got a fair amount of work to do. I mean, for the ones in the east, it'll be easy, right? Yeah, they're, they're fine. No they've got the Leona's entry point. They're okay. Even if they go southern road, I, I doubt the rest of Prosty would be um, hanging around too long out there, at least on the entry point. You know, once they get further down that road, sure. But for me, it's it's more... Rest, you know, raise your edge. Have a really rough way out of this one. It's a bit tough terrain about you know, north of Hacienda. Um, they might struggle a little bit on that. G2, TSM, quite a mirrored approach in the east. They'll be heading in a similar direction. Could be a scuffle between those guys. That could definitely happen. But we are getting towards 10 minutes and zero fatalities so far. 16 teams, of course, alive and 64 players. I'm not scared to shoot at anybody. There's more multiple teams of their position. Man spoke about before. Peacocking is a big thing in this game. Just lay a few pop shots down, even... See players actually shooting at walls sometimes, not even aiming the way, it's just to make people known of their presence so they don't take a challenge on them. Stop both sides taking any casualties on arrival. NIP have made it into the back of Kumisera, so the Knights will have unwelcome guests that they have to deal with. Maybe Navi also turn up. You can see on your screen there on the ridge line here, not too far from it. Maybe the next point of contact should they want to. And actually, another team that's not too far is Vitality. Just in the distance here. Oh, Unity have gone full on to the circle down south, haven't they? They've gone full on. And Scoom's doing the same, so he might get a little bit of an eyeful here. Um, hard to get vision until about now. He's going to spot them out, and it still mm. keeps a little bit of the south in there, but it does move away from the likes of Na'Vi, Windstrike, Rage Your Edge, and there's Dastish going past. Now, Scoom's on his own. Only one man here. Haxedi, does he bail him out, or does he leave him? This is maybe Scoom literally out on an island now. Very, very isolated and could be a problem going forward. But this is a nice circle. It's a little bit different. I like this. I think Schoom will have the potential to just bodyguard and gatekeep this bridge himself. This will give opportunity for the rest of Wreck to set up on the opposing side, should there be a nice compound off the side of that bridge. 
teams that are forced to move. Rage Your Edge have yet to actually get inside the circle. There's still a fair amount of distance using up all their oh utility. God. Nipper having a bit of a struggle here on the old Sandy Dunes. Yeah, I'll, I, and, and it is eyes on NIP here. They're the ones who have a great deal to gain if they get this right, but they are in very tricky territory. They're one of the first teams to move. If Vard just have an issue. I don't know what's happened with Vard there. He just kind of slowed down and everyone else cracked on, but NIP, not an ideal position for them right now, but I guess you have to pick what's what's in front of you, so they're going to have to make a choice here. Not going to opt for that yet. Time to carry on. Uh, maybe Wayne on Vard as well. Just going to get everyone moving forward. They can get a nice bit of territory. It's not too overwhelmed as long as they scout as best they can. M19 and FaZe quite close by. FaZe going to just shuffle in a little bit here, move slightly further east. TSM G2 making their way in. They're pretty okay. Chris is a million miles away, just kind of south of El Pozo, trying to find a way through as the blue does begin to move. Nice little wrap up from NIP. Hold behind the shack, keep all the tires together, and then advance forward to a compound that's nice and secure inside the circle. Mm. Uber has been spotted, so Dimash will put the warning shots out just to force him back. I won't expect Faze Clan to make a play for this one. I thought to swim. Yeah, it is hot is outside, why not? Hmm. I mean, they have to be thankful there's no players actually on the beach, otherwise they'd all be dead. It's a bit of a public play, is that in my eyes? But I suppose if they... Yeah, the next bridge really is all the way in Valdemar, so I, I, I get it. I, I wonder if Razor Edge think, you know what? Let's do something clever here. Let's do a military island-style rotate. I wonder if yeah. they take the bridge across and go through Higos and come out and expect no one to be there. We've actually seen them do this on military. We've seen a few teams do this, even M19, B1... When we look towards mm. Erangel circles that are kind of around this area, they'll go on to Soznovka and rotate on the island. I think they're going to do it. I, yeah, I don't Keeps blame them. Keeps them safe, right? Yeah, it does. Uh, Liquid going to be condensing, bring themselves right back together. Uh, definitely needed. Double drop in the water feels PUBG man. Um, Faye's going to continue further east. They've just been scouting, taking their time, waiting for the other teams to move further ahead slightly. Uh, centralized areas, Crow Crowd, Reciprocity, DA, all very nice positioning. Uh, Navi, a great deal of territory northeast. TSM and G2, very close by in the southeast, though. A few little micro players that I like as well. I think of Rex's position. The only reason they kind of had that is because Scoon went off on his own. Stopped Unity making an advancement across the bridge, held them back. They take residency here. And now Unity, and they've landed on the beaches. M19 is there, but thankfully it's only one player, otherwise they would have been in a world of pain. Yeah, Orange got across quite early, and he got himself that little little house on the water. Beautiful view. Needs a bit of work on the shed, but otherwise very nice. Um, How many times do we see Orange doing work for Unity? A hell of a lot, actually. Oh, that's a lot of water to be kept in. Okay, here we go. Let's let's look at this. Um, Island plays worked out decently well for Razor Edge, excluding Chris, who is still just leaving Valdemar, <laughs> living in the blue. Um, Teams in the southeast can do okay, not ideal. It will cause some clash, but it's the northern teams, Rich. They're, there's not going to surely be enough room to keep everyone alive here. You'd have thought we'd lose at least two teams during this migration. NIP safe. So as cool, face clan, they don't really have to do nothing, but it's the north, more towards the eastern side. A bit of a wobble. Kane answers back. Walkie goes down. Chris now follows up. So TSM, potentially, they've been following G2. God All the way down hell. on the eastern side, keeping on the kill feed. There'll be so much to keep up with. We're not just going to keep play by play in it. We'll just let it unfold and try and watch the stories as they approach us. TSM down to two. They lose two of their men to G2. Once they go forward and advance, there's going to be wreck there. There's going to be unity. This could be difficult for TSM. They could be the first team leaving us here on this map. Vitality now open up onto Crow Crown. That's up in the hillside. Ents, they'll have an eye line on that, so they have to be careful from the backside further in the north. Navi, DA, Windstrike, Everybody still yet to make it inside the circle could be difficult. Bigger picture here. TSM going down means that room to move for NIP as well. And NIP are in a good position. Yes, between the Knights and uh, Phase Clan, not easy, but hey, they're in good circle spot here. So this is a bit tricky for TSM. Got to keep themselves playing late game now. Uh, only down to two. Michael getting a bit of flack there. I don't know who that's from, actually. Is that still G2, actually? They've still kept there tabs on them. But for G2, they actually probably want to remove TSM from that position to take residency in it. Because where else can they really go? Navi is knocking on the door to the right-hand side mm. here. You can just see them in the distance. They have to come down from that hillside. TSM's going to commit all the utility once it's all said and done. The vehicle will be gone. There's no one else out of it, really. The damage is already G2 happening. G2 pulling up. Oh, Kent, are you Kent okay, mate? Kent is getting in there quick. Real, real snappy. It's one way to do it. 
stylish entrance. Chris keeping the fire on. So again, G222 split. Going to send in Udia and Kane. You do have Rafi trying to be a little bit of a bugger in the background. This is he could do something. Either. Yeah, no, it's not. Rory's been found by Udia. He might need Kane to kind of take the wheel on this one and push on towards Michael. They know where he is. Nice little head peek over the top. Making sure they stay safe. Really well played. G2 eliminated TSM in 16th. Needs to be careful not overextend because Rafi just got punished. Now, they don't know how close that is, but Unity definitely have vision on that side. And for G2, this opens up a rotation point. Wanted still doing damage to several different teams here. Couple of knocks with a K9. Wind strike, not one of Crow Crown follow up. Point goes to them. Snark out in the open. Four members of Liquid still up just in the distance. Nades go down. There'll be a warning. Initial smoke is there so you can make his ejection from this fight. You don't want to take it. You're off on your own. Yes, your teammates might. Oh, okay. G2. Didn't scout it well enough. Nope. Simply put, they just went hell for their into there. And that's a big loss. They've lost on Braxco, Chris. They've lost down a lot here. The other two players who are the ones who hit that TSM sort of uh, remaining squad are still standing. But they're not in for a fun time. If they, As soon as they move up here, Reciprocity should have vision on it. Um, I don't know how much Rafi was able to relay information-wise. Raise your edge looking for a way off. The island. Has Chris got a boat? I, I can see him reversing, so you'd have to assume so. I feel like it is a boat. It's the only thing they can do, right? They can't set the bridge. There's too many teams there. They can't go swimming. They will die to the blue. Yeah. You have to get the boat. You have to make an entry point. Maybe they go for that lower ground just below M19, because anywhere else, there's going to be a slow approach to the circle. Blue on the back, and they're going to be outside in full viewership of everybody. Liquid's making a move in the north. Let's see if mm -hmm. they take any damage or flak on arrival. I think mm, they will Jim's just got get in on the, yeah. the, ridge, uh, the roadside, should I say. You can see Razor Edge trying to scout before they leave. I don't know how well they're going to be able to see that compound that currently M19 hold if they do go for it. And your team might have vision from the other side, so it's going to be a pinch, whichever way you look at it. N's going to lose out on Mikas. Only not, not flush. That could happen, though. And the boat play comes in as they do get onto the coast. They've gone for a safer entry point rather than going closer towards the circle, maybe because they simply couldn't scout that far. So having to be a little bit conservative on that, but it could hinder them with that blue pushing them forward. The bigger amount of luck in front of Raise Your Edge is the fact that M19 have lost one and Dmash is off, completely split from the rest of the roster. Mm. So they have a huge compound in front of them. Four versus two. If Raise Your Edge play this one right, they could smoke up, get to the compound, and maybe even kill what's left of M19 in there and take it from them. This will be a telltale play. We'll see how it goes down in the kill feed. Great pick up late game. Still, yeah. I think we should get a hold of that one. He should do. Yeah, it's, it should be easy as well. I don't, I don't see easy. too much flat coming his way. He should be fine. Um, yeah, a bit of a touch there for him. Again, making Crow Crowd very strong. They've had quite a central compound for a while. Phase Ooh, on the move. Yeah, leaving the compound. 2 twoing out of there. Or at least Uber and Mex. No, it's actually three of them on the move. So it's just Fuzzface holding back for now. I think elite players been keeping an overwatch on what FaZe have been doing. The information come through because I'm just seeing Dmash belting it across the map to their position. There has been some sort of call come in. Raise your edge have been spotted. That's FaZe yeah. shooting down there. So raise your edge. Position duly noted. And with that rotation timing from FaZe, they have perfect vision on it. And yes, yeah, Sigsy's going to fall M19 with the steal. So that does tell FaZe that there are players there. So FaZe are getting a good image of who's around them, territory-wise. And Dmash is very close by, though. I do worry about Dmash, you know, Dmash on his own. It, 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 it's got you know, huge benefits, but it's also very dangerous. Center map's still quite open, to be fair. Vitality of the strongest point right now. You can just do whatever they want. Circle, they'll be in, regardless of what the next update is. And generally speaking, everyone else is going to be playing edge. Imagine if this one just plants it smack bang over both of those compound between Crow Crowd and Vitality. It's just going to be an edge battle all the way forward. <laughs> Response. Oof. Hello. Yeah, Uber's had enough of that. I think Razor Edge sadly went all the way from north to south and just simply couldn't do much. Menox has managed to find a way through towards M19, but again, it, it feels like you're going to be down to a snake here, and I think Elite Player might have an idea of it, but he can't do much about it. Centralizing circle, fast rail. Bullet to the brain of Elite Player. He can't get away from it. And Chris will die to the blue. Maybe Razor Edge can hold on to something from this, but I very much doubt it. I'm curious what NIP do here. The big storyline still resides with them, and they are across the road. These sort of shifts will make it hard. FaZe Clan going to start gatekeeping them. Manox does get the grenade, and you saw Fast Rail just bleed out, and you have to assume that that comes down to how much time they spent in the blue. They'll have used up all their meds and their gear, their utility. And now it's down to Menox to try and fight this battle. 
Astro bleeds out in the background. Point will go to nobody. Oh, Faze already moving up towards NIP's cross. That's going to be a very tricky cross here. And especially with the Knights moving across, they've already got themselves over. Reels is joining a little bit later. But they, you know, they've, they've secured a way through. He might get caught off by maybe Crow Crowd of anyone, but that's going to be hard. So this is the big one. If maybe Reels gets spotted out by NIP. Yeah, they crack East. off some shots. But the East is going to get busy. It makes it worse because wind strikes split in a three-man stack. One, Whoa, one, one. Aw, D-Mash. Up Navia going. Navia rolling in one vehicle. And excuse me, no, they're not. They're just uh, it's looking the at bike the gang. Look at them all. It's the Lost Boys <laughs> on their bikes flying through. If you're old enough to know that quote, I'll be proud of you. But they're going to try and make the best of it, see what they can do. That last bit of situation they were in before when they were on the, the vehicle, something happened Pokemon Moldoy. It wasn't good, but now they're getting involved between Team Liquid and Windstrike. And here they come. They make an impression. One entry in towards this one. They do lose out on best slosh, though. Shadow's there. This is a brutal battle they turned up to. I have absolutely no idea what's going on. This kill feed at the moment is just clustered with bodies across the map. The main head of the fight is the fact that over in the east, we had three teams that had to jump into this. Crow Crowd, even though they're safe, want to get involved in this one. NIP, they're gone. That's a little bit unfortunate because they were starting to catch the pack in fifth position. Crow Crowd at the loss. top. Liquid's there. Samti does spot out Crow Crowd. Further afield, though, they're still up against it because Navi has a fight on several different fronts. They are split amongst rosters all on this decent embankment. They are gone. One member left of Windstrike, I believe, Timmy, who has to make a movement towards Liquid. That's going to be a difficult one because Samti is behind them, outside of the wide and towards the blue. Right in front of them, two more teams. Ents, Vitality, they hold the line. Windstrike's gone. What a messy circle that was. Yeah, and the South certainly isn't resolved yet either. This is the battle we're jumping into. Dmash is prowling towards Reciprocity, just kind of behind them in the hills. Uh, Scoom, very much tunnel vision focused towards getting Kane down. Erdia is on the other side of the road. You still have the Wanderer down there and Menok. So a couple of snakes on that southern side. Shiv gets spotted. That's Ents in the east getting line of sight towards Reciprocity, and it's a flush for Dmash. Look at what he's got. Not Wanderer on the opposing side who. Between them, they're picking up points and fair play to them. Circle comes in. The northwest shift. It's quite a hard one at that, certainly. When we have difficulty of all these teams just crashing into each other on the east. Let's make it even worse for the boys. They have to keep on going and keep on rotating. Meanwhile, look at FaZe. Look at that territory they've got there, Rich. That is just confidence. It's blocking off any entry point from basically the entirety of the south, right? G2 trying to hold on. That's Erdia, I think. Yeah, last one standing there. He was the snake in the south. Slowly waiting. Punishing, of all people, Dmash. I thought it'd be Reciprocity who got caught, but no, it was uh, Dmash and Wanderers over there as well. Third party on the way. Entz is not far from this. There's only one minor issue for Fears, and it was brought up on the desk. Uber, he might be a god, but now and again, he can just get caught off guard being so solo, and he is... He's actually quite far away from the rest of them, so if he goes down, he will be on Reservoir. Oh dear. Goes for the spray and the prey, but it's not there. Thanks, Clan, see him again, and that's Itzy holding a, a weird and wonderful angle. Both him and Mexi are just playing outside of the white, the safe zone. Oh, the gun blocked it. He didn't see Scoom. Pretty frustrating, I can imagine, for the Finn there, but it will be traded back in. Reciprocity do get eliminated within the top 10. And now the eastern side still continues. This is far from over. Team oh. Liquid's... Now, hello. He didn't get him because he was hitting the sand. If he gets that res, that's... Oh. I don't think he can. I think it's too quick. Oh, he got it, yeah. <laughs> uh, Team Liquid moving on the east. Vitality still have the houses, so not going to be easy. Jazz is quite close to this. He might be able to hear spot, see someone... And split up here could get uh, kind of shot in the back by Team Liquid if they get vision on it. Faye's getting a bit of a fight with the Knights. That's a big battle actually out on the western side if that kicks off. Gene, big shot towards Jazza. Wow. Quick reminder, you don't want to mess with Liquid. Yeah, that's going to hurt. They're going to be on the back foot now, and I would expect Liquid to try and pounce on this one and make something happen because they need to get through Vitality. They have the main obstacle in their way of this circle. They've got one down. They've done damage to Kramer also. The grenades bounced out of the back wall. Slightly ticked. That might do it. It does. Nice Cooks work. it, banks it, job done. Shadow in the window, uh, death from above. Santi's being caught, the push. There was an attempt there, but they need to flush Shadow. Do not let him get Kramer on his feet. Do not let him out of this house. Get the res onto Santi and keep going on. But that circle, they might be two up against it. He might be dead here. That could be a lost cause. 
could be. FaZe are pushing this. FaZe, FaZe have gone from west to east, and they've gone past Rustamar, which is a problem. There now could be an issue. You've seen that happening on your screen. FaZe might be overzealous since they've put out DA. DA are just going to be proning somewhere on the map, let's be honest. They aren't going to be hyper-aggressive. They never are. Now, Fuzzface and AT need to kind of support each other. Fuzzface has been isolated. He's been kept away. Uber's nade works towards Ibi. But again, there's still Rustamar, there's still Mert, there's still Sixmo. Maybe FaZe might have split themselves a little too late here, maybe spread themselves a little too thin. Both of these POVs you're watching on screen are from two different teams. Deer wants... I don't see him in the grass. Rustamar's the bigger concern for me. With the barrel at that range, if they come a little bit further down, I mean, don't get me wrong, Mert's going to be an instant one. But he gives away the game. Fuzzface could undo it, though. Mo. Oh, he spotted him, surely. Oh, no, he's looking the other way, excuse me. Back of the head, somehow stays alive, taps him again in the leg. Now they're giving away the position. They have to be aware of the response here. For Rustamma, this will be the go signal. He knows that phase is distracted. Move up, try and get a bit more job. In this one, makes it onto jeans. God, there's so there many There we go, this, this is where it happens, right? Fuzzface's position was always gonna be a bit of a ticking time bomb for DA. As soon as he turned up, it was going to be pretty much that position gets, you know, gets rumbled. It's, it's a tough one to work from, uh -oh. and it should be execution time. It is. I don't know if the revise got potential towards it, because Mexi's still being kind of um, preoccupied by Team Liquid, and he did well towards that. I think it was Crow Crowd in the end who got it from the north, but FaZe basically pushed all the way to the east and just cut that out. Now, Rustin Ma can play up from the south. He can be a nuisance. The Knights know that maybe FaZe aren't in the best position right now. That could be a battle to happen, but the north side is not for free. Crow Crowd still hold a lot of ground there. This ridge line, this passive play, might break apart phase in the long game. Holding back for now, that's fine. Could have pushed up and got involved in all those fights what were going down, but clearly, Ents need the points and thus playing for the placement. Good shot from Drayden there. That knocks the tab and puts Kember into a point where he has to go for the res. Set with a level three gear, will survive. They try and get this res off, though. It's It's been kind of a, a problem. He's actually answered back. Mac 14 does its job snack down, so there is a response. But unfortunately for the Knights, they had fought so up, rough. and now they've been split between two different rosters. Oh, that shot. Uber. It wasn't even evil. It wasn't Uber. Dirty. It was fuzz face, I think. But still, I mean, the thing is that you got to feel in a way for the Knights. They pushed across at the right time, but you could see the way the valley kind of rolled. Everyone had vision. Rustamark going to be creeping away in the background. He is having the time of his life. He does not want to make a sound. He's trying to play for placement, and that is not a bad idea at all. If he can get a second, that could push Ents out of that relegation uh, situation. Now, FaZe looking to take on Crow Crowd. Crow Crowd all confined to this one tiny little building. You don't overpeak. The MK can hurt. So FaZe need to be careful, but they look deadly. There's the first bit of movement. Going to try and split a, a player across, but Tab falls in the meantime. 8C already pro providing a really nice deeper angle. Look at that Western play from him. And again, FaZe playing this nicely. Going to keep maybe a point of uh, the team together at you know, the southern swing and then just going to push players to the west. Make sure the Crow crowd basically have no safe angles. And that is exactly what they're doing. Fuzz FaZe wants in on the action, but they do not know about Rustamar. He's in such a point where he can't really be problematic until this fight's over and done with. The issue is, if Fuzz gets caught in the open, they'll go for the instant flush. Does Tab see him? I think he does. There's some damage coming off on the corner, so they've read this. The smoke will be dissipating. They've got another one up. Every single time they put this down, it just keeps slowly but surely using the utility that they've been holding to this point. There's a world in which this could backfire on FaZe, right? Purely because they don't know that there's only three there. I think they're starting to work it out. I just saw Mexi kind of looking, check around yeah, behind him. Just a little swing um, of the arrow. Just because they've, they've seen these three players here a lot. I feel as though you start being able to kind of identify, okay, where's that fourth? Where's that last player then? He's going to be able to sneak up because they're on the other side of this ridge line. He will hear the steps. He might be forced to fight, but he will want to try and play for second place. That's his goal right now. And I think he's oh. almost in. There we go. He's okay. He can get off a little bit of a heel here. Does that... Does Mixi hear those damages that are off? No. Probably not. I very much doubt it. He might have to fight this one, though. Yep. Gonna have to go for it. Does get down one. No instant trade back, actually. That's good. Rustamar gets the flush on Mixi. And now FaZe might be in a spot of bother. Uber should get Rustamar here. Should is the main word. FaZe now forced to fight as Crow Crowd have held their ground for a long time. They've had utility. They've had smokes. They're not out of the woods just yet, quite literally. Rustamar is up by the trees way now. Nade oh. from Fuzzface. 
and maybe there's hope for Ents to finish second yet, and it will be 10 kills coming in, but there's a fight back from Kemba. There's still life in them yet. AT and Fuzzface holding on as best they can, and now we're down to two. Rustin Ma, what a play from him to have that patience late game. And now a 1v2 would be perfection, but it's unlikely as he eyes it up with the car 98. Too many players, if they peek left and they peek right, he knows he's done for. They're toying with him, they're baiting him. And he's just waiting his time. Can he maybe get some more points? Can he flush another player? Will that blue confirm it before FaZe can? He makes the run, but Aitzi's there. FaZe Clan with an incredible win. 13 kills. And ends with a very good placement. 23 point game. Now we talk about a face Sunday. I'm close in the first game and then make it count in the second. Third and a first, you can't be arguing with that one. And again, when you're looking towards claiming a championship for phase two, this is how it's done. Work your way up the leaderboard. Bring people back down to earth. G2 didn't have the best of games. They went out quite early. Liquid didn't get too many kills, but they at least got involved with some fights. Navi, I believe, were another team that didn't really go 